Well, good afternoon and welcome to this week's episode of Money and Mindset at 40 Plus, where we invite you to play big and conquer your money fears through our stories. And that's what we're all about. I'm Sylvia. I'm Jenny. And welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thursday, the weeks go by so fast, mm-hmm. Jenny. I, I tell you, like it's mm-hmm. already another episode. I know, I know. And it kind of anchors my week. I get to Thursday and I think, okay, <clears throat> I've got this moment to pause and reflect with Sylvia and with the, our community out here. And uh, it'll set me on my path towards the weekend. So here's to the weekend, Sylvia. <laughs> yeah, here's to the weekend. I think th- it's, it's Thursday. It's a weekend anyway. Uh, we had... The last two weeks have been quite eye-opening, and they mm-hmm. they anchored this episode, right? Which is, yeah. um, I have trouble spending money on myself, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and two weeks ago, we had a story about I am not good with money, which then went into Aaron Crotty's episode last week of spending on our image. What does our mm-hmm. image say? And I came out with a confession that I don't have many clothes or shoes or pairs of jeans or pants. And I might have like way back when, when I worked in an office and that was the norm and maybe pre-children, not even with kids, I was in an office. And now that I work at home, I'm not, you know, those things are not as, you know, perhaps where I am putting my focus when I'm spending. So today's show is all about that. Yeah, about spending. About spending. Well, actually, it's not about spending. I, I should qualify that. It's about having trouble spending. Um, and I think just picking up again on the last couple shows we've had, if you heard my sister, Sarah Mitchell, on the show, um, a recorded one that we put up, it's on the YouTube channel. She talked about owning your money story and her journey into the stock market and what money means to her and how she uses it in her life um, for freedom, really, is kind of what her, her journey was. Another story about a woman working in a corporate, changing, becoming a mother, and all the shifts that that makes in your money spending, in your money mindset, and uh, the choices that she made. So this one here is definitely personal for me. I have trouble spending money on myself. I notice that the bigger the amount I'm going to spend, like a fancy pair of boots or like uh, a nicer car. We're going to talk about, about cars later. <laughs> it's it's like the ticker tape says, well, Jenny, if you're going to spend that much, you've got to really like it, or it's got to be really perfect or, and all that pressure, honestly, so it just makes me want to curl up and just say, fine, I don't need it. I don't want it. Well, there's conditions, right? It's almost like there are conditions about the, the spending yeah. and uh, your point about be, you know, having kids, I find the focus while before pre-children, I would go walking at lunch hour and, oh, there's a great purse. There is a great, uh, whatever it was, um, an album at the time when we were buying CDs, you know, uh, whatever it was, I could just buy it Mm -hmm. and did not feel guilt. Um, And when the, now that the children have come, there always seems to be something for the kids to buy. Mm -hmm. And then therefore I am not prioritizing Perhaps, you know, it's me. Oh, I'll get that another time. Oh, another, yeah. another time. The, when, when I have my next client, when my next client signs, when my next group starts, and there are things that I, you know, would, would probably have loved to buy yeah. uh, that I haven't, that, that I haven't yet. So I realized too that I don't second guess the kids' purchases. So I'm like, oh, well, they need a green out equipment. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. They need new shirts. Okay. Like, right. like, and I'm not a big buyer, like, like to understand about my kids and their clothes. I'm not a huge spender. They have one hoodie. We've talked about this, one pair of boots, but I don't really nickel and dime. They need good quality winter boots because we live in a cold climate and they have to keep their feet warm. I never really doubt those purchases. And yet I almost always think think carefully about the purchases I make for myself. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, I do the same. Mm -hmm. For those listening, what are your spending habits? Do you spend money easily on yourself? Do you treat yourself? Do you save money and put it aside for yourself? Uh, We've often talked, Jenny and I, about the Jenny Joy account. Um, I have my own Jenny Joy account, and I've called it that, the Jenny Joy, but it's going to me. Sorry, Jenny. (laughs) But uh, how do you allocate money? And there was a, an interesting, we were talking about investment ver- investment versus buying or, or I would call it spending. spending. I invest in myself through, mm-hmm. I love coaching. I love uh, classes and mm-hmm. courses. I have to be careful 
not to overcommit because I can just buy course after course and not finish them. And that then is becomes for me a waste of money. So I have to, yeah. I, I'm, I'm cautious there, but I will invest easily. Oh my God, that I, I don't want to take that program. Yes. It's $5,000 here. <laughs> take yeah. my card. Right. Uh, but to buy a $200 pair of boots, it's, oh, gee, mm, mm, um, I'll just stick with my other ones from last yeah. year, right? Yeah. And I think there are some spending anchors. This is kind of an interesting thing I've been exploring. Um, you know, how much money would you spend for a t-shirt? Eh, 30 bucks is probably my max. Maybe 35 if it was really nice. But I'm not going to spend 80 bucks on a t-shirt. That is merely a money anchor in my head of association of value to a number. It's completely irrational, Sylvia. Because what if I buy the most awesome t-shirt that I wear all the time and it's completely for, perfect for me? Like, who cares what it costs? Mm. Um, pairs of boots. I don't have a lot of fancy boots because boots tend to be expensive. You put me over $200 for a pair of shoes or boots and I go, eh, I don't know. I have to really like them. I'm only going to wear them from September to November and maybe like March to like all this rationality, rationale comes in. Um, and so that's an interesting thing too, like those anchors that we have, how much is a new car worth? You know, do you go past the $40,000 a year mm. marker? There's, there's these sort of weird, uh, money markers, anchors that exist around us, how much you would give to a friend's peer to peer fundraising campaign. You know, we don't, you don't have to say it out loud, but we all have a number in our head that's comfortable. And then there's like a stretch number or something that's out of your comfort zone. And I, I think that's anchored in, in some of these things. I'll tell you one more story. I walk by jewelry stores and I look at the beautiful pieces and I think, who the heck buys this stuff? <laughs> the beautiful diamonds and sapphires and yeah. that's all the sparkly stuff, right? It's, yeah. uh... And I'm no judgment on it. If you love jewelry, please put in the in the chat what you love about um, jewelry and what, what makes you joyful. Like, I mean, I can imagine putting it on your finger and wearing it all the time. And Stacy's mm. talking about this too. She has a hard time spending on herself. I, yeah, absolutely, Stacy. But if if those are passions of yours, please tell us, um, you know, because uh, I'd love to, I can't even imagine asking my husband for aquamarine earrings for Christmas. I'm just trying to imagine. I can think of so many other things I'd rather buy with that money than that, Sylvia. But that's what it comes down to, right? Is what do we like? Uh, mm -hmm. And that's what the Jenny Joy account and, mm -hmm. and ask, you know, Christmas lists or present lists. And it, it's yeah. that those little, little or big purchases that you like yeah. if you if yeah. you're not into yeah. uh, i don't know if you're not into cowboy boots well you're not going to buy the cowboy boots right but you might buy a different pair of boots mm -hmm. you know so it's really mm -hmm. what are we valuing uh you know but i that's like it. i like the uh, the idea of an anchor and th that's ingrained in our stories mm -hmm. I, i'm just thinking of that mm -hmm. now how much would mm -hmm. i go you know pay for how much have i paid for a t-shirt i like the six dollar ones at h&m <laughs> i need to buy 10 of them you know and just keep wearing them no but there are some nice staple pieces you yeah. know we've gone shopping here in montreal our friends come in to yeah. montreal and go on saint denis and uh, and it's interesting to see how much everyone will spend on different things. Right? Yes, it is. I, re value. I remember traveling with a friend and we were at a conference and we walked into this cute little trinket store and she proceeded to sort of grab a couple things, one for her daughter and da, 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 And there's like three or four things in her basket. And I was just shocked because I don't buy a lot of trinket and please there's no judgment on the word trinket if it means something to you and yet on the flip side i can remember when my husband and i were traveling we bought a beautiful thing in italy of this blue and white pottery and you know sylvia every time i pull that out to put cheese on it it brings this huge smile to my face yeah yeah and here, Colleen, yeah, I have spent more money lately on home upgrades. Yes, instead of personal items. I mean, when you have a home, this is a big, you know, that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. However, I feel more satisfied buying good food and a bottle of wine. And I think Jenny, Jenny will, uh, she will share that good food and bottle of wine, right? <laughs> what were you talking about, Jenny, about um, your, your one of your larger purchases, particularly yeah. during the pandemic? Not just particularly no, during no, the pandemic. Okay. I, I am a takeout gal. So we have sort of a rule in our house once a week. And I think I think it fits in the creativity and variety category for me as well. It's not just giving me a break. Um, it's also I love trying new things. My family's adventurous mm -hmm. with Japanese food and Italian food. I like trying the new stores. So that is uh, that is definitely part of my spending. I love good 
food. So I will do that, Colleen, till the till the cows come home. And I'm not really willing to sacrifice on that one. Um, I love to cook too, um, but but uh, yeah, trying new things is really important to me when it comes to food. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm trying to think, I like, um, as a family experiences, uh, you know, we're always looking for things to do right now. Of course, pandemic, so much stuff is shut yep. down, but, okay. uh, we're, we like to travel. So yep. we do like to go, uh, further places while other people don't like to travel. So really what we're, what we're really saying is that I think we, we can spend on ourselves just on things that we like. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Does, that, would I be correct in saying that? I think I think so. And I think also, you know, we talk about partners and spouses, the exercise mm. of talking covertly about what's important to us. I think often we do this stuff surreptitiously or assumptions made about what other people value and what other people don't. Um, and then when you when you put them down and you say, I remember an exercise I did one time with what are the most important things to spend on? And, uh, you know, I had my kids' education was up there. Mm. Um, uh, travel, family travel was up there. Um, good food, was, of course, was up there. Um, you know, my personal hygiene stuff is kind of down down the list. It's, you know, I got my hair done recently. Um, but I don't do it all the time or I choose when I do it. And so having a good, and of course, top of my husband's is, you wait, wait for it retirement savings, right? That's really important to him. And I yeah. respect that 100%. But taking a look at those columns, you can see why there's interesting uh, conflicts there. And they need to be talked about on what we choose to spend money on. Mm. Um, yeah, I think so. And I think that a lot of you know, we've always said, and I think the, you know, everyone watching, you can agree that a lot of uh, difficulties in a couple uh, our partners at home are the spending habits. Yeah. And sure. that does come down to our values, our personal values and what we're, mm -hmm. you know, perhaps, you know, you can spend $400 on a pair of shoes, but your spouse will look at the visa bill and go, Oh my gosh, why are you spending? Because they'll only spend a hundred. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's again, that conversation. Yeah. Uh, and Stacy here says, I, like I don't have an issue spending money on me, but I do have guilt. Let's yeah. talk about the guilt remorse yeah. sometimes yeah some ebb and so, flow where i'm intentional yes and i'd love to hear from stacy too I, I think that she's picked up the word guilt and i think that's really an interesting one too right you get it home and then you're like oh my gosh or if you notice that you're hiding it or you're putting it in your closet and you're taking off the tag we're talking about clothes but it could be anything for me right now it's home improvement stuff just like colleen i wonder stacy do you ever take it back like, does it ever actually mm -hmm. manifest itself for you to take it back? And, and I'd love to hear from you because I never take anything back. Once I make the decision to buy it, I will stick with the decision, even if it was a bad decision, Sylvia, mm. with clothes. And it'll sit in my closet and it'll sit in my closet and I'll never wear it and I'll finally give it away. And I wonder sometimes about the energy of that, that I'm not owning my choices and I'm allowed to change my mind. It's so interesting that you, you say that because I tend to buy clothes that I think look good or that I want to try something new and I bring them home and I, I'll, I'll put them on and then I don't really like it and JP will come and say, oh my God, you bought Bought that that really doesn't look good on you and it's just it's I, I want to be told that something doesn't yeah. look good on me you know and I was sensing it as well and uh but sometimes I don't take them back either I'll just give them away they've got tags on it and I'll just put yeah. them I'll just I'll yeah. just give them away but that there there's a whole other thing there <laughs> you know yeah. Perhaps I wanted something else, but bought the cheaper version. Yeah. I, I know there could be something yeah. there. I'll dig. I'll dig. That's uh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's coming up for me. Yeah. And that's what we do on the show, right? We're not saying we have the answers, but we are saying that we're willing to co-coach each other, to try things out, to talk mm -hmm. about things. One thing I find is a real benefit of the show is keeping it top of mind. You know, I send uh, Sylvia a note during the week and go, okay, I need you to talk this through with me. You know, or Stacy says here that she doesn't take things back. I find that really interesting um and and so talking through having a space to talk through these stories and these observations is i think a really um really powerful part of this uh this community that that uh hey we've created together with all of you guys I out know, there it's wonderful yeah I have a, um uh yeah talking about value and mm -hmm. you, you mentioned cars before uh, that is not, uh, my husband has a nice car that he really enjoys driving and I have the family car and it needs to be changed, but I would rather put money 
on a trip or invest in coaching or anything mm -hmm. else. I'm driving this car into the ground. I really <laughs> am. And there's a story behind that. There must be. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't allowed myself to dig there, but I'm, mm -hmm. you know, where the kids keep saying, when are we getting a new car? And I was like, but I, I, I do love my car and I'm very grateful for her. I, you know, I, I thank yeah. her every day as I get in there. Yeah. It's just not a, a huge value for me. Like yeah. she gets me to A to B. Yeah. I, you know, she's been about 13 years old now. Yeah. And um, I, I know a new car is coming though, but you know, that's. So tell me yeah. about when you first bought the car. Tell me what it felt like to get that first car. Cause Ooh. was there any symbolism behind that? I'm just curious. Well, it was because we were car sharing before. Uh, this was before my son was born and uh, we were car sharing to save some money as a couple and uh, which we did and then i said ah oh, when we have a child i don't want to be doing the car sharing thing anymore so let's buy a car so it was our first car that we bought together it was mm -hmm. our first family car we bought the the most you know the more expensive model it had all the gadgets and everything we were very mm -hmm. very happy to be driving this car mm -hmm. and uh it's 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 really held up well and mm -hmm. but i think i'm saying it on the show here i know i need to okay it, it, but i know a car for me is not an investment i don't know if yeah. anyone else feels that way I but it's feel that's an, an investment well no, it's an investment but it's an investment where after a year it's lost a quarter of its value that you'll never get back so maybe so, i'll buy a used car that's a couple years old yeah. there you go maybe i'll there feel better go. about that way yeah. maybe i'll feel better how do we because we do spend time in it i mean i'm the one schlepping everybody around so wouldn't i want to be driving a nice car mm -hmm. yeah that's interesting. So mm -hmm. I'm going to pick up on your car thing and talk about cottages. So we're busy working on um, a vision for a family cottage. And this has thrown me into a whole bunch of mm. conniption fits. I've talked to you about this already. Um, this sort of, you know, for lack of a better way, what are the Joneses going to think? Oh, too big for her britches, Jenny Mitchell, investing in a, a second property. Like there's something about this, the extravagance of a second property that's kind of sticking with me. Even though I know it's it's an investment in family time, it's an investment that we both want to make, I'm totally excited about. And yet, you know, to Stacey's point about guilt, I'm struggling with that. And I'm realizing it's mm. mostly what other people would say about it. So I'm not past yeah. that yet, Sylvia. It's a fear of judgment, yeah. yeah. Hmm. What what would they, yeah and and what if they do feel that way? Yeah, I mean, are they good friends of yours? Would your good friends feel that way? I don't even think they feel that way. I'm no. I, I think they I worry that someone might feel that way, which is so silly. Um, and if you know me, you know that my values around money are around building something, making something better, uh, improvement, future state possibilities. That's what money is to me as an alchemist. So it's it's kind of an interesting oxymoron. I think mostly it's just it's pushing me out of my comfort zone, my anchors. Mm -hmm. And I find myself saying stuff like, well, we couldn't possibly spend more than X or we, we definitely don't want to go past Y. And I'm like, what why have I chosen that number what what is the symbolism of that number and how does this relate to the project that we're building and it, yeah and and you what you had talked to me about was you know if I, if we build it let's say it's 800 square feet versus 1200 square feet I couldn't possibly have the 12 and I was like well why couldn't you yeah. you know you're going to be spending a lot of time there let's be like so these are the questions and the conversations we have ladies I mean it's really uh we 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 live them open to co-coaching so if anybody out there has some questions or thoughts for me about my 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 cottage investment rather than my cottage spend I'm absolutely open to them um, I want to pick up on one more thing that that triggers me Canadian Tire and Shoppers Drug Mart the purchases on you when you get your MasterCard okay I hate seeing Shoppers Drug Mart I think I should buy shares I probably do have shares in Shoppers Drug Mart because I spend so much money there between two girls and they have local grocery stuff as well it's like yeah. shoppers, shoppers gas shoppers shoppers and but i hate it because i i can't quantify what it is it's just stuff mm. that kind of goes into a black it goes hole. in and out it is really i think things that go in and out right i mean yeah. we use a very uh how would you say yeah it, it's not it, there's no investment in there none but none yeah. but food i mean i like the fact that they have food i uh for those uh, after i had my babies um, when they were new, I would wait by the door for my husband to come home. I'd say, come home now. I really need to get out of the house. And Shoppers Drug Mart was my haven <laughs> where I would just go. I'm not a coffee drinker, so I couldn't, I really didn't go and sit in the coffee shop, which I think you did. Okay. Uh, but I went to Shoppers. So I have this, I, I have a, a lovely relationship with the store and I do like to go 
And but I would just wander the aisles, you know, on on mat leave, and I wouldn't come home with much. Now, but then they started bringing in food, so that was an excuse to go buy food. So, <laughs> I my my sentiments are a little bit different. But again, I understand. I understand yeah. where that's coming oh, from. And can I make a neat plug for Sylvia that if you go into Shoppers Drug Mart mm. and you use the self checkout, you might hear Sylvia's voice as yeah. part of the shopper self checkout. She. Yeah. Uh, She's a voice actress and um, has this wonderful voice when you check I, out. I think that please put your items in the bag. Insert your nip card. <laughs> Take your items now. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, Colleen is giving you some other people don't live in your house. Invest in the second property. Mm. Thank you, Colleen. This is what Thank I keep you. telling her. Who is that person that's giving, you know, telling you that mm. it's it's just your little, it's your little, uh, mm. your other voice there. Yeah, yeah. Water and off your shoulder. Yeah, totally. Totally. I'm um, Colleen saying here, spending time in a bookstore. I oh, am such a bookstore person. Totally. Books. Yeah, I could spend hours just checking things. I actually really enjoy that. And I don't even need to buy them. I just need to look at them sometimes. And every once in a while, I'll, you know, I will use the online hold at the library because um, that's free, right? Using the library is free. I have trouble spending money on myself. But to me, mm. books are books fit in a different category. That's self learning. That's an investment in myself. That's picking up information. Um, I love the values that books bring. I definitely buy them for my kids without, without a second thought, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, playstations and, and video games and stuff. Maybe I think twice, but no books, books are mm. on a special pedestal for me and for, for my family. I know this week we had a, a, a moment, my daughter and I, she goes, mommy, she's, she's eight and she's learning French. And now she's learning how to, to read in English because she speaks English fluently. Uh, and then she said, mommy, come and sit. She goes, I want to let you know now I love reading. And then she took up her, the babysitter's club book. And I'm like, yes, thank gosh. One child of mine, the other two yeah. are preferring video games these days. Yeah. And here she's preferring to, yeah. she goes, look how much I've read. And yeah. this has been a, her challenge. She's always told herself, her mindset yeah. that she wasn't able to read. Oh, wow. And then here now she's picking yeah. up this book and it does have yeah. a lot of drawings in it, but doesn't matter. There's a lot of words in it too. So yes. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so books, hopefully yes. books as a thing, something to spend on. So mm. if we kind of think of where we, a couple of the themes yeah. and some takeaways for today, I think one thing to remember is you do have money to spend. You choose how much that is and make it yours and make it mm. conscious rather than unconscious to, to Stacey Schwega's. We have lots of Stacey's in our world. To Stacey mm -hmm. Schwega's point about um, spending on herself and choosing what she wants to spend on. I think that's where the power comes that, yeah. that the power comes from. And that's yeah. uh, a mindset. Uh, yeah. You know, that's our mindset as well. And that yeah. choice, it doesn't have to be large amounts. And that's what I no. tell them. It doesn't have to be large amounts and it can be a large amount. It doesn't just doesn't have, there are no rules, right? There are no yeah. rules. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. and paying yourself first or putting oh. money aside for yourself first and maybe just watching like when I do this joy account we've talked a lot about the Jenny joy account I must admit watching that number grow I have no interest in numbers except that account is the potential for what I could possibly spend on myself and I do love watching that number grow Sonia well there you go if you haven't caught the episode of last week it was with Jenny's sister Sarah yeah. and same parents they grew up in the same house the same messages being you know indoctrinated into them but they have very very different money stories and Sarah just said what you said she likes to play this I won't say play but invest in the stock market yeah. and in dividends which gives you a small return you know so a big return uh, to watch it grow yeah. So you do have a I do. personality there, right? Yeah. So because you were well, saying, oh, it's so different. Yeah. But I'm also a fundraiser, right? So I love targets. Mm. I love goals. Yeah. I love closing sales. I love connecting. And so you put me in front of a hurdle, Sylvia, I'll jump. You just tell me how high. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's good. So the, the the paying ourselves first, and we we uh, were talking about that before. Um, that that's not always easy. Mm. That's not always easy. But as a business owner, I find mm -hmm. myself paying everybody else first, and I will pay myself last, mm -hmm. and then don't have money to invest or don't have mm -hmm. money for what I actually, you know, would like mm -hmm. to 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 grow. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, and we were talking about oh well, watch what everyone else does, and you'll notice that not everyone has the same mentality as you. And I was like, what? What do you mean? Not everyone pays everyone else first? And you're like, nope, 
nope, there are people that yeah. pay their contractors last. And I'm like, ah, oh, okay. Yeah. So again, learning other people's stories to me is a great way to understand if you're comfortable with your stories or if they need a little rejig or retwig. Um, and that's where I think community comes in. And that's where I think sharing these stories together is so important. And what a wonderful segue into next week's show, which is women lifting up women. Mm. I have a little story before we go. Yeah, go. We're on my journey. We've talked uh, in another episode about uh, our favorite books. And one of them is Lucky Bitch by Denise Duffield. And she got me on to the topic about up-leveling our lives. Mm -hmm. And up-leveling in small things, too, if we're not mm -hmm. comfortable spending on ourselves, to up-level. And one of hers was, uh, take a look at your underwear drawer. And does it need to be, you know, does it need a little more spice in it? And I really took that to heart and I went and looked and I was still wearing underwear from my maternity days, like when I had babies. And I was like, you know what? I threw it all out. Well, before I went and got some more, then I threw them all out and I started and just that little, you know, and I'm always looking around the house now, where can I just up level, right? I love that. that. I really like it. I thought that was a great. Uh, I love that. Talk about women uplifting women. She is one of those women that just up levels, uh, you know, uh, uplifts yeah. us. Yeah, absolutely. So, so if you don't know that book, that's a great book. I think it was on one of our reading lists. Get yeah. Rich, Lucky Bitch is the book. Mm -hmm. um, remember to find something in your world to up level. Next mm -hmm. week, we talk about women lifting up women. This idea that there is enough to go around, that we can lift mm -hmm. and celebrate each other. There's enough money. There's enough love. There's enough Everything. abundance. Um, and uh, we have a wonderful, I'm going to kick off the show with a quote from Glennon Doyle's book, Untamed. Uh, Ooh, which is a good one. something else. If you haven't read it, we're going to talk more about it next week. Um, and with that, I think we should sign off there, Miss Sylvia. Yes. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming on, listening and commenting. We really mm -hmm. appreciate you all and have a wonderful week. And we'll be back for a little bit of inspiration next week. Yeah. Tell us how you invested in yourself this week and we'll see you then. Bye, everyone. Bye.